This video is going to be used as an excuse to have an entire series of videos on legality and illegality of projectile weapons. That's anything from a bazooka all the way down to a bow and arrow. Effect, intent, design, and appearances. I'm, I'm, lately I've been talking a lot about appearances. Let's get on with this. We're going to do a flare gun video. Warning to YouTube, flare guns are not considered, because of a specific set of information I'm giving, firearms. Complaining about me making a video about quote unquote firearms or being a gun channel isn't going to do any good, number one. Number two, I'm going to spread the videos over three or four channels. I don't even know how many I have at this point. I've, I've had to make some. Next, the information I give in the video is irrelevant if someone can read below in the description, which pisses you off. Archive of this video and its description will be included in the video description section so that you can make it impossible to erase what I'm giving you. That's the point. Long before radio existed, summoning help, lighting up the night, sending a message, covertly or overtly was done by visual means. This could be light reflected, flashlights, or flares. The flare gun used in PUBG is a conventional flare gun by most people's standards. It's commonly used because of two reasons. Even though it's an Olin, old name for Orion Company, flare gun, it is based on absolutely copying an outdated patent that is not enforceable anymore. That's a safe harbor device. Warning. Anyone can legally manufacture this item and sell it for profit without paying for the patent rights, most likely, but you're still not allowed to make a flare gun because it's considered a sawed-off shotgun, even if it's made out of paper. If you're a cosplayer and you make one of these, depending on where you are, it is legal to get away with throwing you in jail for the night and use this as an excuse all the way up to actually making you go to prison. I'm not shitting you. Definitions in the law. I'm going to do a whole video on nothing but definitions. It's going to take up probably more than one video. Definition of a flare gun. Flare. Fired from a single shot. You only get one shot. This is a characteristic that's required. Breach loading normally. That means it loads from the back of the gun, not from muzzle loading. It has to load from the back of the breech. Snub nose pistol. That decides the characteristics physically of it being a pistol and being within certain safe harbors and outside of others and it being considered a sub nose. With a barrel having an inner diameter of the following. Now the reason these diameters are used here is these are the ones that are considered Quasi safe harbor, 37 millimeter, aka 1.45 inch, aka 145 fucking caliber, two gauge or one gauge or one and a half gauge shotgun barrel diameter, or 28 millimeter, 110 caliber, 1.1 inch bore, four gauge freaking shotgun, but. These are cannon diameters, if you're not aware of it. In fact, the first one I mentioned is technically up near the range and actually past the range, both of these are, to be an anti-aircraft device. It doesn't matter if it has a one-half inch barrel under the law, depending on safe harbor status. Next, 20 millimeter, 77 caliber, 0.77 inch, 10 gauge shotgun pistol. Or more commonly, this is actually the next two, these are most common, not in the United States, but 26.5 to 25 millimeter, 100 caliber, 1 inch, 4 gauge, or whatever, punt gun, shotgun shell, cannon. That's, I'm not kidding, that's one of the cannon varieties. These were preloaded charges for naval, anti insurgent or anti-boarding cannons. It's, I'm not kidding. Now why would you use anything that was commonly used for something destructive device style? Yes, we're going there. Let's get on to the more or most common variety. 
And this is the one you're all going to be looking up, and it's from PUBG. You're going to see this. The reason it's in PUBG is because it's the most common one someone saw that day. The one in uh, Team Fortress, uh, you know, the Half-Life engine-based one, uses a, the larger one I just mentioned, and it has that two, two pieces of metal on top that have a specific purpose. I'll have links to videos and content on that, too. But let's get to the most common one. This is the one a lot of you PUBG guys want to use. Here we go. 18.5 millimeter bore, two inch long, 12 gauge, 0.73 caliber, or 73 caliber, two inch long, 12 gauge shotgun shell. Which is a contradiction in terms because the shotgun is supposed to be loaded in such a way that it has an effect, and the length of the cartridge, the whole length of it is two inches. I'm not going to put one on camera. I'll do that later for a slideshow where I crayon the thing. <clears throat> but with or without, and this is important to realize, depending on the one you get, it will use a 14 millimeter outer diameter end barrel attached to what looks like this 2 inch long 12 gauge shotgun shell integrated barrel that has a 28 gauge bore inside of it, much smaller bore. The gauge, larger numbers mean smaller diameter with a AA battery sized object that is the actual flare. This flare is usually a pyrotechnic composition, magnesium, strontium, nitrate, your mom, incendiary material, inside of an aluminum cup capped off with black powder slurry as an ignition time delay underneath it that is ignited by a propellant of a low pressure shotgun charge with a shotgun uh, primer. It's com as compared to conventional ammunition, this is essentially an underpowered 12 gauge shotgun shell with an integrated barrel, so it lets you replace the barrel every time you shoot. But in and of itself, it is a sub caliber adapter for a 28 gauge shotgun shell. Uh, it's made of plastic. Don't do that. I'll be getting to that in a minute. Because this looks like a gun, because it has virtually every characteristic of a gun, there are some issues here. But but they're legal. Can't I make one? Here we go. Flare guns, for safety and practicality reasons, have to use the following. An explosive charge capable of propelling the flare that I just mentioned, which is the size of a one th it's a AA battery diameter and about, about half or two-thirds of the length of it. Here we go propelling it up to 500 feet per second half of Mach 1 so as not to ignite the flare until they hit it like 250 feet above the ground and so that they can detonate directly below, above you producing an initial flare temperature of 374 degrees or 376 degrees or and burning up to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit a fire hazard so it has to be up an extended period of time away from anything burnable and it must burn for several seconds but not so long that it could hit the ground burning it has to it has to stop burning before it hits the ground parachute versions can burn a lot longer and they are usually in very different shell casings these shell casings with the underbore capability that sort of thing are interesting to make them able to be used in a normal 12 gauge shotgun there is a 12 gauge version, it's a 2 inch shell, and it will, um, it can work in most 12 gauge shotguns because of the way they're designed. I'll have a separate video on that. Because this is made from breakaway plastic, all of it, and the physical design of where the hinge is and where weak points are left on purpose, and because it's not easily chambered for any current non-obsolete cartridge, it is treated not as a sawed-off shotgun for only a few reasons. Uh, if you pull it back and pull the trigger, there's a plate here on purpose that's made slightly stronger by a couple of percentage points than the front part that has the hinge all the way up here at where your index finger ends, there's a hinge. That means that the barrel will blow forward, driving all of these parts loose, and you'll retain your finger but the trigger might be dragged along and hurt your finger. The metal, the only part of it that's usually metal, and these days it's plastic, is that trigger because it will make sure that you do have only one thing, uh, a misuse of flare strike on your finger, proving when you go into the medical people 
Oh, you fired a flare gun by putting a shotgun shell in it you cut down. Because it's kept a two inch limit, in order to put a shotgun shell into it, you'd have to put it in as a blank shell. A blank shell will blow the damn thing to pieces in most cases. I'm not getting into what can be done to fix this. I'm going to describe you DIYing a flare gun as a cosplay item and not having to go through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and apparently pizza parties. So here we go. It doesn't hold a current cartridge. Current cartridge. There were cartridges that were made for the damn thing because originally this was literally a 12-gauge pistol. It was designed to use a 12-gauge pistol that had this adapter that they built. Basically, originally Olin or Orion or whatever company that came up with this idea originally designed this to be a company that would sell flares that are about this long that you could go twist or pull and set off or stick into a flare pistol because the flare pistol made it easier to fire. Always treat this as a sign of distress like a 911 call with all the bad things that happen if you don't mean it. This will cause rescue response. Laws regulating improper usage can be very strict, like false calls or putting a bullet in it. Any misuse of a signaling or emergency item, whether it be a telephone system, FBI, a flare gun, can be a federal offense, local offense, or all of the above. Misuse of a declared safety device. What if it's not a declared safety device? Here we go. They are only legal because the company that got them got USG, USCG approval. USCG. And also state approval. Because if you want to make one of these things, you have to go through a bunch of hoops, pay a big tax, or pay a site tax to make them as a manufacturer, and make sure that they have safety functions that make it to where if any idiot tries to put a real bullet in the damn thing, it will catastrophically fail, not let them do it again, cost them a lot of money, that's why it's more expensive, and very importantly, not hurt them in enough of a way that would cause a lawsuit. Now how you do that is pretty difficult. There are variations of this. Remember, the hinge goes like this. It doesn't rotate on axis to make it to where it would hold pressure. It is not made of any kind of metal, including aluminum reinforced with barbed wire or other metal wire inserts while pouring the aluminum. And remember, duplicating a federally registered item, whether it's a flare gun or a rail gun, so you can get all of the duplications off of it, is 100% illegal. Repairing something like this is not illegal, including, what was it, the family broom or such and such ship? If you replace every part of it one piece at a time, technically you aren't copying it, you're replacing it. As long as the parts are confirmably broken and you made a new one from them, you can make them out of anything that will be at least as strong. That's actually the legal statement on it. You had to dig that up. Let's get on with it. They're not designed, tested, or intended to be used with conventional ammunition. This is a ridiculously large caliber firearm, smoothbore handgun, or pistol, or a very concealable short-barreled or sawed-off shotgun, legally and practically. That's why there are laws on it, because people figured out you could get away with one shot, since it's a one-shot weapon anyway, instead of making other things that are legally look upable. It meets the definition of a destructive device as an incendiary ordinance, and at one time this, uh, the design for this was actually used to kill tanks. Somebody actually did that. And yes, the larger capacity one-inch ones, you could easily fit in a one-inch shell that's designed to shoot 100 birds at once and someone obviously blew their arm off. Conversion to fire conventional ammunition will be called a zip gun in most states. In the United States, a flare gun is considered to be a firearm by the ATF by definition, and then you have to have an exemption. That's why it has that rule on it. It's a smooth bore barrel insert put into it. We classify it as an NFA AOW. If you put a pistol conversion in it, it's considered a pistol and has to follow all the laws, and you still have to deal with it. Making a gun isn't illegal. Converting this is absolutely illegal. Second video.